Hello and welcome to my channel. I don't just draw portraits of people, sometimes I draw pets as well. I'm going to do a couple of portraits of dogs. This is going to be the first one and it's going to be done in colored pencil on sandpaper. The sanded paper I'm using is a wet dry 1000 grit sandpaper and the pencils are polychromos, Faber-Castell polychromos colored pencils. There's my reference in the top left corner and I decided to create a vignette so I didn't want to draw all of the body because that would make it a little bit difficult for me to create a balanced composition and bring the head and the eyes closer to the center. So that's a good thing about vignettes, they allow you a little bit more freedom with composition and uh, you can sometimes omit some of the details that maybe aren't as important for the portrait. So uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start with some darker tones here to draw some of the shadow areas like for example here between the ear and the head. I have no idea about the breed of the dog, it doesn't really matter. And like I said, there's going to be two of these uh, colored pencil portraits. The, the next one is going to be posted next week, probably. So I first started with a black colored pencil. And uh, you'll notice that I'm using cooler tones mostly. I'm using some cooler grays and even some bluish tones. And the background color, the color of my sandpaper is also kind of bluish gray. Now at one point uh, during this drawing process you will see that I will change my mind and switch to slightly warmer tones because uh, at one point I decided that I didn't really like how these uh, cooler tones interacted with the background color of the paper and I thought that maybe some warmer tones would stand out a bit better. Be that as it may, at this point I was giving a little bit more texture to these ears, uh, trying to imitate the appearance of very short hair, short fur, because as you probably know, the length of the fur varies depending on the part of the body of the animal, and as always, you need to try to match the length of your strokes uh, to the length of the hair that you're drawing. So here I started working on the eyes, again uh, working on the darker area first, and if you look at the reference which will be uh, in, the, in the description if you want to check it out, you will see that we have some catch lights in the eye, but they are pretty subdued, so I decided to go with slightly brighter colors so that they would stand out a bit more and so that the eyes would maybe appear a bit more interesting and a bit more lively. Um, so I kept uh, working on these darker areas first, trying to establish those, but uh, here and there I had to go in with some lighter tones, like with this lighter gray. This is a light cool gray, because like I said, in this first uh, phase, I was still mostly trying to see if I can work with cooler grays, but later I will switch to slightly warmer ones. And I didn't want to go in uh, with a white colored pencil just yet, because that would be a little bit too bright, because uh, the uh, the dog's uh, fur is kind of a mixture of some black and white and grayish tones. We also have some nice highlights here around the nose. So I put those in first with a lighter colored pencil and then I worked around them with a black colored pencil. Now on this surface, which is a sanded surface, you can layer a lot and you can work from dark to light as well as light, and, uh, light to dark, so you can easily put lighter details on top of the darker ones, but sometimes I just prefer to put the lighter details first when I can, so that I would make sure that they are bright enough and that they are not influenced by the layers under them. Moving on to the other eye sooner than you would think, because I sometimes delay drawing the other eye quite a bit, but here I did the other eye almost immediately, immediately after the uh, second one, uh, after the first one, made some adjustments, 
so that they look uh, fairly symmetrical as much as that is possible because the head is turned slightly to one side it's kind of like a three-quarter portrait or maybe a four-fifths portrait and now I'm finally starting to put in some uh, lighter details with a white colored pencil where I know that the fur is going to appear much lighter uh, because this part of the animal's hair is uh, much lighter and it's also catching a bit more light from the light source. So I put in a few more of those uh, lighter details and then I uh, kind of started making some transitions between the grayish areas and the dark areas. While I'm uh, working on all of this texture I, I still have to pay attention to the general shape of the dog's head and face so I have to shade those areas even those lighter areas need a little bit of shadow and they need a certain range of value so that I could so that I could describe the shape of that uh, face to the viewer and uh, because the uh, because the pencils don't cover everything because the it's a textured surface here and there I would use a little bit of my blending tools but then I would work on top of that again with my pencils now this part of the face here is kind of speckled a little bit we have some of these uh, dark spots start dark speckles so I decided to make a whole bunch of these smaller marks and um, here I was paying a little bit more attention to the reference photo because I wanted to make the distribution of those uh, speckles and those lighter and darker areas as close to the reference photo as possible. Naturally when you're drawing animals you don't really have to worry about likeness quite as much as you as when you're working on portraits of people but still people who commission drawings like this one they know their animals well and uh, you want to get them to look as close to the uh, to the actual animal as possible uh, so I've done most of the left side of the face and now I'm moving on the moving on to the neck the neck area is not uh, that clear to me uh, from the reference uh, uh, there, are, there were patches of lighter and darker fur here and there was also some, some kind of a collar but I don't really see all of those details so I'm just going to try to simplify it a little bit and try to uh, see if I can get away with it. Uh, I put down a little bit of black colored pencil here on this part of the transition between the neck to the shoulder area and now I'm just going to use my blending tools to fade that bottom part of the portrait and create a vignette. But first I have to make sure that I put down enough of the material so that I would be able to move it around and so that I would be able to fade that lower, lower part of the portrait. So this is what a vignette is supposed to look like. You don't draw all the way to the edge of the paper. You just kind of stop uh, at the neck or the shoulders depending on uh, how much of the body you want to include and uh, once again like I said one of the main advantages of vignettes is that uh, it gives you a little bit more flexibility with compositions and uh, if I try to uh, draw his legs and his paws I would have to create an imbalanced composition where the head would be placed kind of more to the top uh, left corner and I'm not really sure how I would balance that out and I didn't really feel like drawing any background because I like the background color of my paper I think it goes well uh, with the portrait and uh, I didn't really think that the background would add anything to the portrait so I opted for a vignette and I do think that vignettes are probably our best choice the best choice in the vast majority of portraits now for that series of portraits I did, uh, those colored pencil portraits of actors, I mostly had some background but there I also was uh, had more freedom with the reference photos. Here I'm uh, drawing this uh, 
medallion or this uh, dog tag, whatever it is, on his collar, adding some brownish tones. And by the way, I added a touch of that brown to the eyes as well. And now I'm adding some lighter details because this uh, detail is made out of metal and this part of the surface which is facing the light source is going to appear a little bit light, brighter and reflective. So I want to make it look like actual uh, piece of metal and now I'm just going to try to draw some of these details here as much as I can see from the reference. As you can tell my reference photo which like I said will be in the description is not of the greatest quality but uh, I tend to have slightly lower standards when it comes to portraits of pets because I can improvise a bit more than I can do with people. Uh, I'm going to get back to that topic in a minute, but uh, let me just say a few words about what I'm doing here. I felt that the top part of the head needed a bit more value, so I went back in with a black colored pencil. So like I said, uh, with portraits of pets, I have a little bit more freedom to improvise, and maybe I can examine another animal that uh, is similar breed or has similar appearance and try to fill in the gaps uh, which I'm missing because uh, some of these reference photos can be either a low res or you, uh, maybe you don't see all of the details you want to see. So, you know, you can uh, maybe simplify certain things or improvise a little bit and still make it look good. And I thought that uh, these uh, reference photos I got for, for these couple of dogs that I'm going to draw, I thought they, that they were simply good enough. Um, anyway, I'm moving on to the right side of the body and kind of drawing more of these darker areas before I start filling in the rest. Here at this stage, I started thinking about switching to some warmer tones, and I've already put down a few of those because I didn't really like those cooler grays and I started working on top of some of those bluish areas which I laid down first and then I started uh, using even a touch of brown here and there so that I could subdue some of those uh, bluish tones that I created. I mean the the color of my sandpaper is already kind of bluish gray so I I was thinking maybe I would achieve a little bit more contrast and allow the subject to stand out a bit more if I added a few touches of some warmer tones here and there. <laughs> Plus, I examined the reference photo, or the reference photos rather, and in this reference photo that I relied on for this portrait, the colors were a little bit cooler than they are in real life. In some other photos, the dog appeared a little bit uh, more grayish or warmer gray so uh, I decided to switch to uh, warm light gray and to warm mid gray to start working on these lighter areas and uh, to change the overall appearance, the overall tone uh, of, uh, of my dog's fur. Uh, I already started talking about this, but I, I didn't finish uh, because I, I don't know, I was doing something else. But I wanted to mention how you draw fur because with fur, as usual, you have to pay attention to the length of the fur, which I already mentioned, as well as the direction of the fur. So you always have to try to match the length and the direction with the length and the direction of your strokes. So if the fur is a little bit longer, like for example in this eyebrow area over the uh, above the eyes, you want to make slightly longer strokes. If it's kind of curving uh, uh, to one or the other side, you have to try to follow that direction and to follow that shape of the fur. And if the fur is shorter, like for example around the uh, snout area, you have to find a way to imitate that texture by either making a whole bunch of shorter marks or by dragging a pencil and producing a rough texture that kind of looks like very very short fur. Uh, the face is a little bit asymmetrical in terms of the distribution of those speckles so I don't really have to worry about their exact placement but like I said I I'm trying to make it look close to, to the original. 
and uh, here and there I'm going in in between them and adding a few more touches of lighter value with those lighter grays and even a white colored pencil but then I, I go back and add a few of those darker speckles so it, I'm kind of going back and forth adding uh, lighter and darker details until I can get it to look uh, the way I like it because uh, sometimes it's beneficial to work from dark to light sometimes it's beneficial to work from light to dark it depends on uh, whatever it is that you're trying to achieve but when you're working on a realistic looking fur uh, when you're drawing animals it certainly helps to be able to do both it certainly helps when you have a surface like sanded paper that allows you to uh, work from both uh, light to dark as well as dark to light and on regular paper of course you wouldn't be able to do that because on regular paper with colored pencils uh, there is uh, you're very limited as to how much you can layer and you can't really work from dark to light so it's very difficult to put these lighter hairs lighter marks on top of the darker ones while on sandpaper it's actually very very easy and like I said this is just regular sandpaper that you can buy in a hardware store it's a wet dry sandpaper but it's a very fine grit people are often surprised some of the people who comment on my videos are often surprised that I'm actually drawing on sandpaper it's not exactly the sandpaper that you would use to sand down uh, wood or something like that it's a very fine sandpaper but uh, it's a good alternative cheap and easily available alter alternative uh, alternative if you either can't get artist quality sanded papers or maybe you can't afford them or maybe you don't feel like paying as much uh, for those uh, artist quality sanded papers and these Faber-Castell polychromos colored pencils are my favorite ones at the moment but I suppose that you can use any other brand it's just that I prefer these because I have a nice range of colors and they're a little bit harder because this surface tends to grind down on the pencils a little bit I'm just fading the edges a little bit with a brush but I'm also working on some other parts of the fur here and there with a brush to soften everything and then just adding some finishing touches and some final details uh, with my pencils. The portrait is almost done. If you feel like some of these uh, videos of mine are a little bit too short and too fast for you, you can always go and check out my Patreon because you'll find a lot of real-time full-length narrated videos there and lots of additional content. So if you want to see that, Patreon is the place to go. <clears throat> If not, you can just check out my other videos on this channel because I have lots of portraits of animals as well as portraits of people. Uh, the portrait, this portrait is now done. I'm just going to put a small signature here on the right side. And that's it. The drawing is done. I hope you like it. There's going to be another portrait of a dog, like I said, very soon. Don't forget to give me a like and subscribe, comment. And of course, don't forget to check out my other videos. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.